Hi, hello, namaste. Welcome back to Meets of Children. Dear students, we are discussing about the political science lesson number 5, continued part of international institutions. In the previous session, we get the information about the introduction for United Nations Organization, aims of UNO, UN affiliated bodies. Let's come to the in this video, we are going to get the continued part of international institutions. Yes, achievements of UNO. So, what are the achievements of UNO? Among that, dear students, peacekeeping functions. The UNO has solved many conflicts due to lack of unity among the permanent members of the Security Council and the complexity of global issues. It can be said that achievements of UN is a mixed one. So, most of its functions are performing peacekeeping works and observatory roles. So, among that students India has always worked with UNO towards the protection of the human rights and world peace. Here are some of the achievements we are going to be identified. So, what are those such kind of very important uh, um, the functions or peace uh, loving functions it has been worked. So, among that UNO has worked towards resolving the crisis of Suez Canal, Iran, Indonesia, Kashmir, Kashmir, Palestine, Korea, Hungary, Congo, Cyprus, Arab, Israel, Namibia, Afghanistan and other crises. Dear students, you can imagine so how the Kashmir issue it is went on between the India and Pakistan border. In the same way, some of the other parts of the world between the countries there has been created lot of crisis. So, those problems it has been maintained by the UNO especially spreading of peace among the countries. So, it has continued to work on disarmament and nuclear disarmament areas. Now, the Cold War has ended leading more space on the functioning of UNO in future. So, as uh, the second one, the very important achievements of UNO, economic and financial achievements. So, related to this, in the UNO charter, it is declared that the UNO should strive to uplift of socio-economic status of the people of the world. This work need to be achieved through the supervision of economic and social committee. General agreement on tariff and trade, it is called as the GATT, is general agreement on trade and tariff which is notable agreement. Another important program is that the United Development Program. International organizations like World Bank, International Monetary Fund, IMF are working well with the able support of UNO. That means the members of UNO, they are getting the financial assistance from UNO. Those who are financially suffered countries, they are getting the financial support from your World Bank, the International Monetary Funds of UNO. So, that is about the economic and financial achievements of UNO, dear students. Let's move on to what are the social achievements of UNO. World Health Organization, WHO and UNESCO, United Nation Education Scientific Cultural Organization and UNICEF. United Nation International Child Emergency Fund, World Refugee Council, 
are a few organizations that are interested in the social well-being of the world. So as for in this concept, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948 is considered uh, as an important international achievement of UNO. So that is one of the very important contribution of UNO has been achieved. The Declaration of Human Rights in the year 1948. And UNO has played a decisive role in the removal of apartheid, the practicing of color, what so the black and white, that is apartheid, colonialism and also imperialism. So these are uh, the greatest achievements of UNO. Colonialism, imperialism, apartheid. So these are some of the very important uh, achievements has been achieved by UN. So let's come to the here are some of the very important uh, organizations which are work under the UNO. Among that Food and Agriculture Organization F AO, World Health Organization, that is WHO, UNESCO, UNICEF, IMF, IBRD, ILO, UNO's Trade and Commerce Progress Committee and WTO. So one by one, we are going to get in detail. So among that, the first one, Food and Agricultural Organizations. Food and Agriculture Organization of it is also called as FAO. FAO was born in 1945 to fight against the poverty, malnutrition and hunger all over the world, dear students. It has three subdivisions. Number one, conference, committee and direct general. And the head office of this organization is based in Rome, the FAO. Headquarter is located at Rome. Now the main aims of FAO, Food and Agricultural Organization, among that development of agriculture, providing nutritious food, creation of hunger-free committees, communities, reforming the life of rural people. So these are some of the very important aims of FAO. So let's come to the uh, next important organization of under the UNO that is called as WHO World Health Organization. WHO was founded in the year 1948 with the aim of improving the health of world community. It has strived to eradicate diseases like plague, cholera, malaria and smallpox. It, it is also working towards freeing the world from AIDS, cancer and other major diseases. And the organization is striving to address issues like population growth, hunger, malnutrition and other challenges in the coming days also. Its head office is located in Geneva of Switzerland. The head of the our head office or headquarter is located at Geneva of Switzerland. So this is about WHO. So let's move on to the next one organization under UNO that is UNESCO. UNESCO United Nation Education Scientific Cultural Organization. It was founded in the year 1946 and its head office is it is in Paris. The head office of the UNESCO it is located in Paris. It is a, a specialized institution which strives to improve the science, education and culture of the world. It is active in technical education, cultural issues, constructive thinking and media strategies to preserve the world heritage also. It supports governmental and non-governmental organizations to spread the importance of education. So students, this is about the UNESCO. So, so next one, another organization which is work under the UNO. Students, that is called as UNICEF. UNICEF, it was 
founded unicef means united nations international emergency fund united nation international emergency fund so it was founded in the year 1946 for the benefit of the children so later it became a permanent body in the year 1956 the institution has 30 members the main aim of the organization is to create conducive environment for the development of children the women so both for children and women it is providing the very important role it provides aid to all the needy countries even it received Nobel award in the year 1965 UNICEF received the Nobel award in the year 1965 because it sells a greeting cards to generate funds to fund its various functions so this institution is known for its human outlook so that is the intention it is human outlook uh, work it is providing or performing by unicef students so this is about the unicef let's move on to so another organization that is called as international monetary fund imf international monetary fund so though it is started in 1945 it became completely operational in the year 1947 the head office of IMF it is located in New York. It tries to solve international economic crisis and it help in the development of global commerce, economic stability and the balance of payment. In this organization, administrative council, board of directors and a managing director works. Its efficiency and transparency has been often appreciated this can be called as the central bank of many central banks of the different nations so it is called as the central bank of the central banks of the different nations it plays the role of a facilitator between the developed countries and non-developed countries yes sir, students i hope you have understood about the international monetary fund imf so let's move on to the so next one that is international bank for reconstruction and development that is called as ibrd ibrd was founded in the year 1947 and it is also called as world bank it head office is in washington the head office of the IBRD it is located in Washington dear students it was founded to ensure economic progress after the second world war this bank provides funds in large sum to promote the growth in agriculture infrastructure development transport and communication development to all the members of countries it helps to balance the world trade and balance of payment process this bank always provides fund to the development countries it is providing the financial assistance for the development of the countries administrative council executive council and president manages the bank there will be a two cooperative organizations which are work under the world bank they are called as the international progressive association and the next one international financial authority so this is about the ibrd and so these are the very important various organizations which are work under the unwo dear students so let's move on to another one next one that is called as the international labor organization ilo so this organization is for the development of laborers laborers across the world those who are laborers throughout the part of world we can see the laborers for their development for their welfare for their benefit so that is the intention ilo established the head office of this organization it is located in geneva of switzerland the ilo head office is located at geneva of switzerland 
every member state sends two representatives to this organization one representatives is from the laborer unions and another one from the administrative system of the country areas like welfare of workers health facilities provided life quality come under the functioning of this institution in the case women workers it suggests measures like maternity benefits minimum wages housing schemes and many other workers related issues are covered under the ILO even though the recommendations are in the form of suggestions most of the members states follow the suggestions its general conference is like a word parliament of the workers and it strives to protect the welfare of the workers of the world so this is about the ILO so let's move on to that is called as UNO's trade and commerce progress committee UNO's trade and commerce progress committee this institution mainly focuses on the facilitation of commerce and trade progress dear students it provides a technical assistance for commerce relationship in the world if there are any administrative bottlenecks affecting the trade and commerce of different countries so in case any countries if they are facing related to trade and commerce for those countries it is providing a beneficiary role for those different countries of the members of UNO this institution works with the aim of providing conducive environment of better trade and commerce nature in the world so that is the very important role it is providing by UNO's trade and commerce progress committee so this is about that students let's move on to next one that is called as another one various organization under the UNO that is called as world trade organization so that is WTO this was founded on January 1st 1945 all the member states agreed upon the general agreement and tariffs that is called as GATT this tries to resolve the various conflicts rising out international trade and commerce it works with the world bank to formulate the policies of international trade and commerce some countries are migrating towards free trade and to suffer a few problems with this WTO is considered as the third important pillar of the world trade along with the IMF and World Bank. So this is playing a very important role as one of the very important trade related uh, like IMFO, IMF and World Bank. So these are the very important uh, various organizations which are work under the UN world. Dear students, I hope you have understood. So let's move on to some of the very important regional cooperation, which are the very important regional cooperations which are work under the uh, UN world. In the present world, one can notice many regional legal organization working for the betterment of the world. Here are some of the uh, very important among such organizations students among that the regional cooperative organization considered as the commonwealth of nations the next one south asian association for regional cooperation it is called as sarc and the next one european union and the next association of south east asian nations and the fifth one the organization of african unity so let's come to the one by one we are going to get the information dear students number one commonwealth of nations commonwealth of nation it was earlier called as the british commonwealth of nations later it became commonwealth of nations so it was founded in the year 1926 india became the member of this after became independent the king of england remains the nominal head of this organization the king of england 
become the nominal head of this organization. There are 54 member states in this. The head office of Commonwealth of Nations, it is located in London. The Prime Ministers, Finance Ministers, the External Affairs Ministers of the member states participate in these meetings. The main aim of this are uploading the values of democracy, production of freedom, poverty alleviation, securing world peace, aiding the development of sports, science and art. It also aims at improving the cooperation among the membership states. So these are the aims of the Commonwealth of Nations. Okay, the King of England remains the nominal head of Commonwealth of Nations. There are 54 members of states in this organization. So this is about Commonwealth of Nations. Okay, so let's move on to the second one, a regional cooperation that is called as the SARC. SARC was founded in the year 1985. At present, there are eight states are its members, namely India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladesh, Maldives, Bhutan and Afghanistan. Now, the main uh, aim of this organization to foster mutual ties along with the economic progress and cultural progress. In order to achieve this goal, numerous task groups, technical groups and permanent committees have been formed. But mutual suspicion and differences, difference opinions among the members of the countries is hampering the progress of the SARC. The policy that all the decisions needs to be the taken unanimously is also creating obstacles to its progress. Though there are numerous burning issues and differences among the member countries, it is still a good platform to resolve differences of opinions. Conferences, workshops and training programs have been taking place for the representatives of these countries on various topics like science and technology, agriculture on regular basis and India has taken active role in SARC. Its headquarter is located at Nepal. So this is about the SARC dear students. So let's move on to uh, the next one uh, the very important that is called as the uh, regional cooperative organization that is European U Union. It is an institution of 27 European countries. It was founded in the year 1992. As per the agreement of matric among the member countries, it provides for common market, common currency and common agriculture and trade policy. That is the reason behind the establishment of European Union. The following are the subdivisions of this organization. It has a committee, commission, European Parliament, European Court of Justice. The European Union resembles a federal government structure. As the founders asserted this strives for international peace and democracy in the world. This seems to be a constitution of earlier European economic community. The member states have given away some of their sovereign powers to union willingly. So this is one of the good moving about the members of the nations of European Union. So this is and uh, let's move on to another one regional cooperative organization dear students that is called as Asian. This was founded in the year 1967. Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines and Thailand are the founding members of this association. At present total membership stands at 10. The chief aim of this organization is to 
फास्टर म्यूचुअल ट्रेड को ऑपरेशन एडिंग सोशल एंड एकोनॉमिकल टाइस अचीविंग प्रोग्रेस इन कल्चरल टेक्नोलॉजिकल साइंटिफिक एंड एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव फील्ड्स ऑफ द मेंबर कंट्रीज इट इज नॉट ए मिलिटरी एसोसिएशन दो इंडिया एज इज अकोमोडेट टुवर्ड्स दिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इट इज नॉट अ मेंबर कंट्री ऑफ दिस इट इज इन अब्जर्व पोजिशन अब्जर्वर पोजिशन इंडिया इट इज बिकम एज ए अब्जर्वर पोजिशन फॉर दीज एशियन कंट्रीज द आर्गनाइजेशन रेप्रजेंट टोटली नईन पर्सेंट आफ द वर्ल्ड पापुलेशन सो दिस इज अबउट द एशियन रीजनल को ऑपरेशन ओके सो दि स्टूडेंट लेट्स मूव ऑन टू नेक्स्ट वन दट इज कॉल्ड एज द आर्गनाइजेशन आफ आफ्रिकन यूनिटी This association of African countries was founded in 1963. The newly independent African countries entered into different agreements among themselves in the beginning. Later, they merged all the regional agreements into one and formed the Organization of African Unity. This asserts the Sovereign power of all the member countries. It strives to establish equality, freedom, and unity among all the African nations. The members are committed to rise wise against new imperialism of developed nations. All the African countries who have accepted the charter of this organization are free to become the members of. this organization this organization it has committee of member states heads and heads of the organization ministers committee mediation and reconciliation committee so these are the important uh, organization of african unity this organization has functioned well against the apartheid new imperialism many other threats threats to african countries so this is about regional cooperation we are students i hope you have understood the concept till now what we have discussed we are students in case of you having any doubts related to till now what we have discussed and even you can comment in the comment box related to the entire lesson of international institutions i will solve your doubts and i will come back with the next video until keep watching my channel thank you have a nice day see you in the next session bye bye take care